the realm of feeling on its own is quite innocent, quite simple. Feeling comfort, feeling discomfort, neutral feeling. A sense contact, feeling, perception, even the thought that names what we're experiencing, a sound, a sensation, a bird. Quite innocent, spacious, uncomplicated. The complications come in with tanha, craving. I like transforms into I want, I've got to have. I don't like transforms into I can't stand, I can't bear. I'm worried about, I've got to get away from. This is boring. The second exit point from the, the cycle of becoming, the bhava chakra, the wheel of birth and death, rebirth, redeath, is related to the second noble truth, that craving, tana, is the cause, the root of suffering, dukkha. bringing attention to the realm of feeling, getting to know the experience of liking, mindfully feeling that sense of delight or appreciation, training the heart, the mind, not to add anything to that, to know the experience, to feel it, to name it even, and then to leave it at that. That's the challenge. To know disliking, painfulness, that first arrow of an aching back, a wonky knee, a noise outside the temple, a cold wind. To know that first arrow discomfort, painfulness, and to not add anything to it, to not create that field of agitation of negotiating, worrying, manipulating, maneuvering, blaming, regretting, planning, or that cloud of agitation fueled by self-view. That's the second arrow. The Buddha pointed to tanha, craving, as being the cause of suffering in his primal teaching of the Four Noble Truths. Because this is the weakest link in the whole chain of dependent origination. Even though in that, that detailed teaching he speaks of avicca, ignorance, as being the very root in the Four Noble Truths, what he points to is not avijja, but tanha. That's the most identifiable, clear, knowable point of escape. The weakest link in the chain between feeling and craving. Vedana, pachaya, tanha. So in the Four Noble Truths, the teaching he repeated over and over and over throughout his entire teaching career, Tanha is named as the cause, the root, because that's where we can most profitably, most beneficially put the attention. That's the weakest link. That's where the chain can most easily be broken, where the escape the heart's escape can be actualized. 
So it's wise, skillful, helpful to bear this in mind, to get to know the realm of feeling. Pleasant feeling, the mind is peaceful and bright, spacious. It's a happiness in the heart. Just in the meditation, to know that happy, spacious, bright, peaceful quality. Not to add anything to it, not to create a person out of it. Just to feel that. This is sukha. Contented, happy feeling. It's like this. A delicious taste. A beautiful sound. A delightful physical form. The spring flowers. The bright daffodils. The luminous blue hyacinths. The lovely fragrance just to smell that fragrance and not to have to hang on to it, try to keep it, get more of it, just to know. Here's that luminous blue color, that delightful fragrance. It's like this, full stop. And painful feeling. Being cold, aches in our back or our head. Sounds we don't want to hear, loud machine noises, people rustling and moving around us in the temple, in the next room. Painful memories, things you don't want to think about. Self-criticisms, getting upset with other people. Waves of feeling and mood. Here is a, an ugly thought, a violent thought, a jealous thought. It's like this. Here's an irritation at a sound. It's like this. Here's an anxious feeling about that pain in my knee. It's like this. So the realm of feeling perception, when it's left alone, just at that, that link of Vedana feeling, it's very simple, spacious, innocent, uncomplicated, nipa pancha, free of complication. And when the, the bridge is crossed, the next link to tanha, that bridge is, is taken, across that bridge, I can't stand, I want to keep this, how can I get more of this? I've really got something now. That's where complication, papancha sets in. Feel that, know that, the arising of that complication, agitation. Being born into that sound, that memory, that feeling, that idea, that mood, Get to know that, what it's like to cross that bridge, the simplicity and openness of feeling, and then the contraction, the agitation, the burn of tanha. As the Buddha said, there's no, there's no fire like raga, karma raga. That passionate, lustful, desiring feeling. It's a fire. So we get to know this, bring attention to this, and use the meditation to recognize that, be aware of it, to realize that bridge doesn't have to be crossed. We can feel deliciousness and know that, beauty. Leave it alone. We're not rejecting it, not resenting it, not belittling it. But mysteriously, when you see something or hear something, taste something, and it has a quality of beauty, and you just let yourself like it without wanting to keep it and extend it, own it, get more of it. In a mysterious way, that beauty is more satisfying. 
It's more beautiful by the the fact of the heart not trying to own it or keep it, get more of it. That spaciousness of attitude amplifies the beauty. It's a mysterious thing. If we let it go, the shape of that primrose, the beauty of the evening light on the clouds, leave it alone, and the heart really delights in the beauty. Try to keep it, hang on to it, get a picture of it. And that that glow, that beauty, that innocence is lost by the very fact of the heart trying to keep it, own it. Similarly, things that are painful. We're not pretending that pain is pleasant. That pain in our leg is still painful. That memory, that regret, is still uncomfortable, painful. But in and of itself, it's just this. It's just a shape in nature. It's like the cold wind touching the skin. It's like this. That's all. And even that can be felt and known, appreciated as an aspect of nature. Dhamma jati, born of the Dhamma. The heart is not making anything wrong about it. Not blaming, complaining. Here it is. In this moment, nature is this way. So even with painful feelings, there can be a kind of joyfulness and appreciation. Yes, life is like this sometimes. How could it be otherwise? And then neutral feeling. Sometimes this is the most challenging. Neither pleasant nor painful. Neutral feeling, the attention just drifts. We wander off into a dozy state. Get bored. Look for something else to be interested in or worried about. Getting to know neutral feeling. Bringing the attention to that. Just knowing that. Sensation of the, the body on the cushion. Feeling the weight. Texture of cloth on the skin. It's not interesting. It's not painful. It's not exciting. Here it is. When the attention is brought to neutral feeling, then in the same way, it's recognized as being Dhamma Jati, natural, born of the Dhamma. It's an aspect of the natural order. Things don't have to be exciting, shocking, gratifying in order to be valuable, in order to be real. Most of life is neutral feeling, if you investigate. Walking along, the sensation of your shoes meeting the ground. Seeing the colors of the sky and the ground, the buildings, people. Most of it's neutral. So if we bring attention to neutral feeling, open the heart to that, it's that same kind of Satisfaction of knowing the Dhamma. Dhammanandiya, the joy of the Dhamma. It's like this, this utter ordinariness, this plain, simple grey of a cloud. The foot meeting the ground, it's this. When the contemplations of dependent origination, I feel that the the Buddha pointed to tanha as the cause of, of suffering because the early part of the cycle, avicca, pacaya, sankara, vinyana, namarupa, salayatana, pasa, can happen so fast, it can be so subtle that it's hard to focus on. So subtle, it's difficult to be aware of that. But feeling, conditioning, craving, that gets our attention. It's clear enough, slow enough, apparent enough 
to bring attention to that. After the mind's already been born into some craving, I gotta have this, I can't stand that. Then the outflowing, that gushing asava has already got underway. Tana upadana bhava, craving, clinging, becoming. There's a, a momentum behind that. So it can be difficult to get a perspective when you've already attached to that taste, to that sound, that beautiful form, that irritating sound, already blaming it, wanting it, hating it, fearing it, caught into that outflow. But the link between feeling and craving, that's the, the kind of transition point not so subtle that it can't be seen, not so forceful and active that the attention is carried away by it. Set standing on the platform just before you get on the train. This is why it's so valuable to bring attention to this point, make this a focus, so then we can see how it is to simply be with feeling. How simple, uncomplicated. It can be a really pleasant feeling, a really painful feeling, a neutral feeling. Here it is. It's the natural beauty. Joyfulness of just the heart being aware of this pattern of nature. That's all. And then crossing that bridge, getting getting aboard the train and then getting lost into a desire. Get to know that. Feel that. Notice that quality of tension, stressing, contracting in the heart. Feel that, know that. Recognize the dukkha that comes from that. And then let go. Pahata Bhanti. That's the response that the Buddha encourages in relationship to craving. Let go, pahata bhanti. It is to be let go of, to be released, relinquished. And when the, the grasping stops, when there's a letting go, the dukkha ceases. Get to know this. When you find that the mind has got caught up in a thought or a memory, a plan, wrestling with a painful sensation, lost in a fantasy, regretting the past, planning the future. When it's grasping, notice the texture, the feeling of grasping. Open the heart to that. Feel it. Know it. Consciously cling for a moment. Know that tension. Then let the wisdom, mindfulness, faculties engage and let go. Whatever it is the mind has grabbed hold of, let go. And then when the heart is free of grasping, notice what that's like. When the grasping stops, there's deathlessness. The cessation of grasping is deathlessness. Bhavani roto nibbanang. When the becoming stops, there's nibbana. Feel that. Know the, the heart in that moment, free of grasping, free of craving. Rather than just getting on to the next thing or going back to the meditation object, getting busy with the practice, just notice, really, let that into the heart. What's the feeling of this present moment? when the grasping stops. Spaciousness, brightness, joyfulness, simplicity. This is the taste of the deathless. When the heart is free of grasping, there's Nibbana, peacefulness, the presence of the deathless, Amravati, the deathless realm, right here. 
Don't skip over that spacious, peaceful quality to get onto the next thing. The doors to the deathless are open, so go through them. Appreciate that. When the grasping stops, know that quality. Spacious, bright, selfless, simple, natural, unremarkable. It's always here, every time the grasping stops. It's ever-present. We just have to notice it.